In the last year and a half, PlayStation Productions has worked towards taking some of the company's video game properties and adapting them into different mediums. On the television side of things, this has led to one of the best shows of 2023 so far in The Last of Us, and the surprisingly solid Peacock series Twisted Metal an odd choice to be sure. But on the movie side, PlayStation Production hasn't been nearly as successful. Their first attempt at an adaptation, Uncharted, felt like a watered-down attempt at recreating the video games, even though it was a fitting choice of a franchise to kick off PlayStation Productions. But maybe the oddest adaptation yet is Gran Turismo, a racing sim known for its incredible realism and which also has no story to speak of. As a game, the Gran Turismo franchise is an exciting, fast-paced series of races and upgrades to become the greatest racer. But as a movie, Gran Turismo becomes a traffic jam of cliches, poor direction, and an underwhelming story that'll leave the audience wishing they were watching any of the many other racing movie options open to them. Instead of attempting to shoehorn a story into a video game, Gran Turismo wisely bases its script on the true story of Jan Mardenborough played by Archie Madikwe, an excellent Gran Turismo player who dreams of one day becoming a professional racer. His father Steve, played by Jaiman Hounsou, thinks his son's hobby is a waste of time and that he should start thinking more seriously about his future. However perfectly timed Nissan and their marketing executive Danny Moore, played by Orlando Bloom, have decided to create GT Academy, which will turn the world's best Gran Turismo players into actual racers. While getting these gamers into racing shape is a tall order, Moore enlists the help of Jack Salter played by David Harbour, a former racer who will whip these kids into shape and help the winner of GT Academy try their hand at becoming a pro. Written by Jason Hall and Zach Balin, from a story by Hall and Alex C., Gran Turismo hits all the beats we've come to expect from this type of rise to success story. Jan is an underdog in the GT Academy, and even Danny Moore questions whether or not he could lead this brand to success. However, considering this is based on a true story, it's fairly easy to figure out if Jan is successful in his pursuit or not. Along the way, Gran Turismo's script is packed with come-from-behind moments, a seemingly unending collection of product placements, and a character seemingly saying this is not a game. At least once every 10 minutes to Jan, Gran Turismo's script feels as though it's an attempt to tell this story second, and a reminder that this is an excellent game first. But the primary problem issue with Gran Turismo comes in its direction from Neil Blomkamp. The District 9, Elegium, and Chappie director has never done straight action in this way, and Gran Turismo shows there's a good reason why he hasn't. Blomkamp struggles to shoot the film's many races in a way that is comprehensible as everything is cut together and spliced up so much that the only way to figure out what is going on is via video game-esque pop-ups that show how Jan is doing in the race. Blomkamp relies on helicopter shots whipping above the track and rapid editing, which minimizes the excitement at every turn. When watching Gran Turismo, it's hard not to think of far better racing films that have captured the excitement of this sport in a much more succinct way like 2013's Rush or 2019's Ford vs Ferrari. Especially when Gran Turismo goes to Le Mans, it's nearly impossible to compare James Mangold's Ford vs Ferrari to this and not see the flaws inherent in the filmmaking. As a game, Gran Turismo shows the long, arduous journey that it takes to be a racer. As a movie, Gran Turismo unfortunately drags in a similar way. As we watch Jan work through various trials and tribulations, the directing and script don't do this story any favours, repeating the same ideas over and over, throwing in elements like a half-hearted relationship, and taking far too long to get to the actual racing which, again, isn't that compelling to begin with. For Gran Turismo to work, this needs an exciting story that pulls you in, as well as a director who knows how to make these racing scenes exciting, and this film has neither of those things. Over and over again, Gran Turismo directly tells the audience that both the game itself and these races are exciting, yet the filmmaking does little to make this claim accurate. What does save Gran Turismo are some decent performances, despite the material. Jan and his father's relationship often get sidetracked to focus on the races, but Hounsou is doing some lovely work when he gets the chance. And even though he gets stuck in the cliches more than almost anyone, 
David Harbour's Jack is a lovable curmudgeon, and some of Gran Turismo's finest moments are when Jack and Jan simply sit down and discuss their lives and ambitions. Sadly, Madaquiz Jan is rarely an exciting presence, and that's even portrayed in the narrative, as Danny Moore questions if Jan will be enough to interest viewers. Madaquay also gets some decent moments later in the movie, when his future in racing is questioned, but he too often feels more like an NPC than a real character. Gran Turismo is a bold choice for PlayStation Productions to bring to the big screen, yet taking a game without a narrative and injecting the idea with a story gives Blomkamp and co more of an opportunity to turn this into something all their own. Unfortunately, Gran Turismo becomes a mundane, bland shell of much better racing films. On paper, it already doesn't seem like it makes sense as a Blomkamp film, and on the screen, he makes even less sense for this project. In the world of racing films, Gran Turismo is merely drafting near the back. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Support in cinema by clicking subscribe, like this video, and leave your opinion in the comment section. Bye.